ما این مفهومی داریم در ایران که جدیداً مد شده و در واقع سیاست های دولت کنونی رو بعضی ها منتصب میکنن به این مفهوم در آکادمی غربی هم این مفهوم الان خیلی رواج پیدا کرده و اون نیو لیبرالیسم هست نیو لیبرالیسم چیه؟ What is نیو لیبرالیسم؟ نیو لیبرالیسم is a an extreme form of uh, uh, worship of markets uh, deregulation uh, privatization, uh, removal of uh, uh, state uh, initiative, uh, a deregulation of finance, and so on, a set of views that uh, came into operation, uh, pushed by many economists, also very strongly supported by the corporate sector, uh, began pretty much with the Reagan-Thatcher years, took off. It's expanded over the world. It's been extremely harmful almost everywhere. Uh, there's been resistance to it. Uh, the uh, in Latin America, which was one of the most obedient uh, uh, followers of the doctrine, uh, was devastated. Just as Southern Africa was, uh, Latin America began to respond, uh, pulled out of it in the last 10 or 15 years, not completely, but significantly. In Europe, it's taken the form of imposing austerity conditions under recession, which is a recipe for disaster, as uh, even the economists of the International Monetary Fund uh, recognize, though not their political actors. They're different from their own economists. In the United States, it's led to about 30 years of uh, essentially stagnation for, or even decline for the large majority of the population, the poorer part, along with uh, extraordinary wealth uh, for a tiny fraction of the population. Now, the claim that they're relying on markets is a total and complete fraud. They're relying extensively on powerful state intervention, but for the benefit of the wealthy and the powerful. And you can see that very clearly. So one of the leading phenomena of the neoliberal era is the vast increase in the scale of financial institutions. If you go back to the 1960s and the 1970s, uh, banks were banks. You know, somebody deposited money in them, they lent them to someone else to start a business or buy a car or whatever. Uh, beginning in the 1970s and taking off dramatically in the 1980s and later, uh, they're barely banks anymore. They're huge financial institutions involved in speculation, uh, uh, complex uh, financial instruments which uh, deceive the public into uh, uh, undertaking highly risky and costly actions like subprime mortgages. Uh, uh, they, they, uh, deregulation began in the early 80s. There were no crisis, financial crises before that. Uh, legislation had constrained financial institutions. As soon as deregulation started, uh, advocated by the economics profession, by the wealthy, and so on, you get one financial crisis after another, each one worse than the last. Uh, we may be heading into another one right now. Uh, the uh, uh, meanwhile, the the financial institutions uh, became almost half of total corporate profits in the United States. Huge phenomenon. Where are they getting their profit from? Well, actually, that was studied by the International Monetary Fund, technical paper. They studied the six largest U.S. banks: J.P. Morgan Chase, um, Citibank, uh, the others. Turns out that almost all their profits come from the taxpayer. Uh, the mechanism is an implicit government guarantee that they will be rescued if they get in trouble. Now, that does lead to the bailouts, which people notice, but that's a small part of it. It means they get cheap credit, they can get uh, easy access to money, they uh, get incentives to carry out risky transactions, which are uh, profitable, but then when they collapse, they're bailed out. It amounts to a subsidy of maybe $80 billion a year, according to the business press, and it's the same throughout. So it's not that they're getting, that they're turning to the market. They're turning to a particular form of state 
capitalism designed for the benefit of the wealthy and the powerful and the corporate sector. That's neoliberalism. یکی از اهداف این برنامه دعوت به کوچیک کردن دولت بوده اینکه ما باید اراده های خلاق رو ترویج بکنیم در جامعه آیا مدلی وجود داره که ما بتونیم دولت رو کوچیک بکنیم اما در دام مدل های نیولیبرال نیفتیم If the state you can make the state small if there are no other predatory destructive institutions but there are when you have private enterprise and capital concentration in the private sector it's necessary to have the state simply to defend against their practices so it, it, there's an image that's used by uh, 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 working groups in brazil and elsewhere it's called uh, living in a cage you're in a cage there's a there's a saber-toothed tiger outside that's the corporate sector The cage is the government. You don't like the government. You'd like to make it smaller. But you need the cage to protect you against the bigger threat that's outside. Uh, so as long as you have private concentrations of capital, the public needs to be protected. Uh, deregulation is a perfectly good example. As I said, as long as banks were regulated by the state, there were no financial crises. As soon as deregulation began under the neoliberal principles, you get crisis after crisis, and it's the public that pays for it. The perpetrators, the big banks, they do fine. Uh, they came out of the last crisis bigger and richer than ever. They're responsible for it, but they're bailed out by the taxpayer, so they just get bigger and richer and richer. Uh, that's a, a state Uh, it makes good sense in the longer term to eliminate and reduce state power, but only when you get to the point where it's not needed to protect the society against a much greater danger. یکی از مشکلاتی که ما در ایران داریم نفتی بودن دولته این که اقتصاد نفتی خلاقیت ها رو از بین برده اجازه نمیده انرژی های مختلف اراده های مختلف به صحنه بیان و جامعه ما رو بسازن و این توسط خیلی از محققان نقد شده از جمله رضا امیرخانی که از قضا مهمان شماره صفر برنامه جیوگی بود برنامه حالا مثلا اول ما او هم از شما آنارشیست البته با روی کرده گفتمان انقلاب اسلامی او وقتی میخواد راحل ارائه بده راحلاش تنه میزنه به مفاهیم بازار آزاد و اقتصاد نیولیبرال و من همیشه به این فکر کردم که آیا یک مدل توازنی وجود داره که ما بتونیم دولت رو کوچیک کنیم اما دولت همچنان قدرتمند باشه که بتونه ما رو در برابر مثلا حجمه خارجی حفاظت بکنه در این حال اراده های خلاق کار خودشون رو انجام بدن دولت همیشه دست و پاگیر نباشه بخش خصوصی هم یک استقلال نسبی داشته باشه ولی خب همه جا رو نیاد بگیره مثلا مثل مدل آمریکا و غرب آیا مدل توازنی وجود داره آیا ما میتونیم به این توازن بین دولت کوچیک اما قدرتمند بخش خصوصی نیمه مستقل و این اراده های خلاقی میخوان انرژی انقلابی داشته باشن و میخوان کار خودشون رو انجام بدن و دولت رو مانع خودشون نمیبینن وجود داشته باشه آیا ما میتونیم به این مدل توازنی فکر کنیم Yeah. Uh, there's no general answer to how strong the state should be. It depends on the nature of the society. You cannot pick one piece out of a complex social economic system and say, let's fix that. It, everything is interdependent. So if suppose that, uh, say, the state in Iran, state control of Iran was weakened, and uh, the oil was put into the hands of international energy corporations. Uh, that would be much worse for 